That's a that's a fantastic question, uh, and I think uh, re really you know, you know is is the next logical question after what I presented, and um, uh, I would I would say that we should apply the same treatment guidelines we apply to anyone with HIV, um, you know, regardless of your viral load, um, and uh, current current treatment guidelines recommend starting. Uh, all patients uh, with CD4 counts below 350 or who have OIs, um, and uh, um, and uh, and to consider starting earlier in the course of HIV infection at the discretion of the provider and the and the patient, and in particular patients with um, uh, hepatitis, viral hepatitis, uh, hepatitis B or C, and then also patients with cardiovascular disease. There is a suggestion in the guidelines now to consider uh, uh, starting therapy earlier because of these theoretical concerns about the role of inflammation. Um, I would not recommend starting uh, antiretroviral therapy if your T cell count is, is high and you have very few risk factors for coronary artery disease and don't have viral hepatitis. You know, but but if, you have, um, if you have a lot of those things, I, I would think about it, and I don't, we don't have the answers. Um, uh, what, I've, what I've presented in the talk uh, is, um, is observational uh, research uh, that um, asks more questions than it answers, and I don't think, we, we don't have enough uh, hard uh, you know, clinical outcomes to tell you that um, you're better off uh, on therapy or not, and so I would, I would, I would certainly hesitate to you know, recommend therapy uh, at, at this point, uh, absent those those types of studies, but I would I would say use the same guidelines we use for anyone else um, at this point. I think it's important to emphasize too. I mean, I think a lot of people know this, but some of you who don't deal with treatment or don't need treatment might not know this. But there's a lot of data showing that treatment itself is associated with metabolic derangements that leads to premature coronary artery disease, premature atherosclerotic disease, with you know problems with, with uh, glucose homeostasis causing diabetes, problems with cholesterol, lipid abnormality. So all those things make you, you know, increase the possibility, probability that you'll have an outcome related to, to that. So you have to, it's, all of this is weighing, it's a delicate balance with what's, what's going to cause the least problems. Yeah. Well, although I would jump in, I would, I would say that there is a randomized controlled trial uh, which uh, addresses this question, uh, the SMART study. and. If, uh, if people who were on continuous therapy actually had fewer uh, cardiovascular events and other non-AIDS-associated events than people who were on interrupted therapy. So I think one can, uh, you know, and that may not hold for people with much higher T cell counts. Yeah, the C4 counts um, also got as low as T50. Right. So, 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 so it's, so, but, but, in, but in lower uh, T cell count ranges, I think um, those data are, are, are pretty compelling that the, uh, um, that the virus is probably worse for you than than the drugs, yeah, and and we're, you know, you know there there are tons of excellent HIV you know, providers out there who can tailor you know regimens uh, appropriately to patients. It's not that you know you shouldn't think that all HIV drugs are toxic. Uh, uh, it uh, they, they do save lives and have saved millions of lives around the world. So, well, so Peter, I good. I have to interrupt to just say that pick your provider. That's true. That's true. That's true. Unfortunately, these smart studies and the other studies are done with hundreds or thousands of people. You don't get the individual attention that you get if you have a good provider. So in your case, if your provider really is knowledgeable and knows that if you are individually handled, it's totally different than when you do a huge study where you don't know if everyone follows what they're supposed to do. And I, I need to second that I still haven't been convinced that going on drugs early is the way to go. I'm not talking about acute infection. There it may be you can do something. But otherwise, and we're divided at UCSF. I mean, uh, they all know. I'm not the one to say go right on therapy. There's a certain time when I think it needs to be done. But as the drugs get better and better, you have to change a bit. But that's where your provider better stay up to date. Otherwise, you're not going to get the right advice. Um, Bob Rohr from DC. It's apparent uh, from the recent work that CD8 cells are both quantitatively and qualitatively different. 
Uh, my assumption is that part of this is a genetic factor, but do we know of any environmental factors within the host or elsewhere that might affect this? And then on a more practical level, do we know anything about, say, the care and feeding and well-being of CD8 cells that people might be able to do in their daily lives to, uh, you know, to help make them happier? Well, I'll get started. <laughs> um, there are people who are HIV infected who get a cold. There are people who are HIV infected, some who get infected with hepatitis B. Any viral infection increases your CD8, but does not, in our limited studies, selectively bring up HIV as well. So you worry that is that going to direct CD8s away from HIV to handle the other infection? And there's no evidence of that either. So there may be ways of increasing CD8s, but you really need to increase the CD8s that are directed towards HIV. So how do you do that? And that's where you get into what I prefer, not vaccine, therapeutic immunization. After the infection, you get, in, you get immunized with viral proteins under antiviral therapy, and that's absolute. And what you're doing then is trying to stimulate more of the immune system against HIV. The results have been, depending if you're in France, they look a little better than they're here, but it's, it's, not, it's an approach that has not been proven really complete so that one would say to your, your patients or subjects, you know, I think you should get an immunization. But it is a way in which you can direct an antiviral response.